like the content we bring you about the heavy metal world, please like, subscribe, and comment to help us grow the channel. What's up, man? How you doing? Good, man. How are you? Good. Uh, hey, it's uh, good to talk to you. I appreciate you uh, taking your time to speak with Metal Express Radio. Been a longtime fan, as you know, so always a pleasure. Thanks for having me. Your new project, Verona on Venus, how did the formation of the band come about? The idea came about shortly before the pandemic. I wanted to do something different than what I was currently doing in Devil Driver. And uh, the pandemic was a little bit of a blessing because it gave me some time to really work on it. And uh, it gave, you know, gave me time to, uh, to really focus in on it. And uh, it was something to do when I had nothing to do. Do you feel like fans that were following you in Devil Driver will also be into Verona and Venus? I knew that it wasn't going to be for all of them because it is quite a bit different than than Devil Driver. It's a very it's a very different style. But I have gotten a lot of res uh, feedback from fans that are that are into it which I wasn't really expecting because it is such a far departure from Devil Driver. But Verona is a a bit of a melting pot of everything that I grew up on. You know, Devil Driver is a straightforward metal band where Verona on Venus has a lot of influences from, you know, the uh, what I grew up with when I was, you know, starting around when I was 15, I would say, is when I really started to uh, get introduced to, you know, the underground '90s industrial and goth scene, and that was a point in my life where I shifted from metal to, you know, I never stopped listening to metal, but you know, I definitely went through phases from when I was like six until I was about thirteen years old. I was mostly introduced to hair metal, and and then I got more into Metallica, Megadeth, Pantera. And then, you know, I was introduced to the whole goth and industrial scene. And then when I met John Miller from Double Driver, he was the one that introduced me to like the whole Scandinavian scene from, you know, Opeth and Flames, Jimmy Borgir at the gates. And um, so I've shifted around over the years and uh, thrown on Venus is. Like I said, a melting pot of all those different genres put together. It's just what I want to write without any kind of consideration on what, you know, other people in a band are going to think about it. It's just me. For now, You're... anyway. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> For now. It, eventually, I would like to start writing with other people because I, I did Popular Delusions on my own with... I had written all the music before I gave it to Austin Diamanda put the drums on but the next record i it would be nice to actually have a producer to co-produce it with me and get some of the other guys in the band involved with the writing process and do you feel like what you've released so far is going to give fans a good idea on what to expect from your full album yes and no when i started verona i really did not know what the band was going to sound like. It was a bit of this popular delusions. I look at it now as a bit of an experiment. When I started working on war baby and I have another song coming out in about a month called how pretty it could be. I think that is a bit more of the direction that I'm going to go with the next record. I didn't want to limit myself. So I wrote a lot of different stuff that could be lumped into a lot of different genres. And now that I have figured out, for one, how I'm going to sing on the records. So, you know, I kind of developed a few different vocal styles for myself that I might use again. I may not. And I might have overdone it a little bit on Popular Delusions with the different vocal styles. I have, uh, some people that have done reviews of the record were kind of surprised of how, you know, I, I shifted around with styles vocally from song to song. But... Uh, the next record, I, um, you know, War Baby is out right now, so that'll kind of give you an indication of what the next record is more than likely going to sound like. And 
how pretty it could be sounds a lot different than uh than war baby but we'll see i could always change my mind again once i start writing i uh i don't want to limit myself and you know when i bring the other guys from the band into the picture that'll probably change things up as well now how is it writing as almost like a solo artist sounds like that's what you're doing right now as opposed to writing with a band it takes a lot longer because you don't have people around to bounce ideas off of and i think for me i can get very indecisive you know i'll have a bunch of ideas for one part of a song laid out and rather than you know having someone in the background that you really respect their opinion which is how things were with like me and Neil Tiemann and Austin Diamond when we were working on Devil Driver together. It was, it was a very friendly, professional, and fun environment for us to write together because we all had a high respect for one another and uh, each other's criticism, and that helps immensely. That helps you know keep things moving because rather than sitting around and going, "Is idea A, B, or C better?" You got someone behind you just going or, you know, better or even better two people that will go definitely go with idea B. And then I don't have to think about it for a long time. I don't have to dwell on it. And it makes things a lot easier. Plus, they're around to think of things that I wouldn't have thought of. Initially, you know, it's coming from a different perspective. And, you know, that's why I feel you know, a lot of this, the best stuff written in Devil Driver are the songs that weren't written by just one person. They were written, you know, with me, John Miller, John Berklin, and Jeff Kendrick all in the room at the same time, bouncing ideas off of one another. And, you know, with a lot of bands, you know, with even going back as far as the Beatles, if one of them wrote a song, it probably didn't come out as good as some of the songs that they wrote together. Now, that's not always the case, but uh, I think that is the case with a lot of bands. It's it's a recipe among multiple individuals working on one song together. Now, thinking forward, would you see yourself maybe trying to get on a support tour or would you see yourself headlining off the bat? My plan is to do some headlining shows or just one offs around L.A. or nearby areas because i don't want to jump onto a tour unless the band has some shows under our belt uh you know uh get dusted off so to speak you know kind of get the uh, the butterflies out from playing a first show playing a first show is nerve-wracking even if you've been in a band for a long time and it's the first show of the tour and let's say you haven't played in three months, four months, or let's say after the pandemic, when we hadn't played together in years, you know, when I first went out with Devil Driver again, after literally not being on stage, God, I think, I think it was around three years. And that first show was pretty nerve wracking. It went well. But um, once you kind of progress onto a tour, I would say the first two shows are kind of nerve wracking. And then the third one, you start to get into your flow. And then after that, it's it's all downhill. Unless you run into some technical problems or someone gets sick, you know, the obvious things and, you know, problems that you have to face with being on tour. But I think it would be best for us to get some shows under our belt in L.A. Um, I would like to start off just doing a headliner and keeping things simple. It'll be in a smaller club, obviously. And, uh you know, maybe travel out of state, Arizona, Texas, or up north in California. And uh, after that, find a support tour and start building. And obviously, you're bringing a, a very unique sound with this band. Who would you see yourself touring with? <laughs> I could see us going out with a wide variety of people. You know, I, I, w- I would say there are a few metal bands that, I've toured with already where I think we would fit the bill. Um, I don't want to say any band specifically. I think I would end up jinxing myself if I did that. Should I keep keep my mouth shut? (laughs) (laughs) 
there's not much to say at the moment, you know. Um, I've had people, I haven't had anyone come to the table yet offering me a support slot, obviously, because we haven't played any shows, but I have had people hit me up already asking to support us when we do a headlining show or, or when we're on a tour. So, um, the fact that there's already people out there wanting to open up for Verona, uh, I look at it as a, as a good sign. People seem to be liking what I'm doing with it. Do you feel like moving forward as well? I mean, you spent 20 years being an active member of, of uh, Devil Driver. Do you feel like you've been able to establish a lot of connections and um, support move forward with your project? Sure. But when it comes down to it, yeah, you've made friends and you know people in the industry, either in bands, out of bands, managers, booking agents, promoters, and all that. But when it comes down to it, there's a lot of people out there starting new bands. And it just... It, to an extent, it matters. You know, I've had a lot of discussions with John Berklin about what he went through when he started Bad Wolves, and he's giving me some advice. And a lot of that consists of, you know, <laughs> you're going to have to go out there and prove to people first before they're going to give a shit. You know, because there's a lot of people out there that have gone one way or another, in one band, out another band, started a new project, and it just it gets propped up for a second, and then it just fails miserably. And I think a lot of people expect it to take off sooner than later. I'm not expecting that. I know I've got a long road ahead of me and I don't care. I will spend the rest of my life uh, doing whatever I can to get VOV up and running again. And it's with any band in this genre anyway, we're not a pop band. And I do think there are a few metal bands or you know, bands that are in the same vein of Verona on Venus that have gotten lucky and had something go viral that really propped them up. But sometimes getting propped up too quickly can be a curse. You know, I've seen a lot of people, people or a lot of bands that have had a very slow rise to, you know, the success that they currently have. And when it you do it that way, the success seems to last longer. If you get propped up right away off the bat, first single, first album, and you know, you've got to be really careful with what you release after that initial spike in your in your fan base because um I feel like those people are um more likely to turn on you in, in the long run. So I don't mind a slow build with this. Obviously, uh, I don't want it to be too slow. <laughs> a little bit of speed would be nice, but we're going to see what happens. What have been some of your favorite releases of 2024? Let's see. What has come out this year? That um, Well, it's not out yet. I am looking forward to Marilyn Manson's uh, new album. I really like the two new songs that he released. I was also a big fan of his last record. Uh, we are chaos. Um, you know, look, I could see, uh, I could see we're on a tournament, Manson. I hope I didn't do anything, but I could see that. Yeah, I, th- I think that would go over nicely. Oh, uh, well, earlier too, I wanted to say Ramstein almost too. I think you know, I could see that being a bill. Yeah, that would be cool. They don't have, really have a tendency to take out opening acts. I want to say the last time, that, I guess on this last tour, which I missed, I was supposed to take my fiance to the last Rammstein show that came through L.A., but it got pushed back and pushed back. And then um, we had some prior engagements planned that kept us from going to that show. So I ended up giving the tickets to um, Austin and and, uh, and his wife. And they had never seen Rammstein before, so they were mm. absolutely stoked. But I want to say the last opening band that they have, except for like these dueling piano players, uh, or maybe they weren't dueling, but just some, I think they had some piano players open up for them on the last run. But I think before that, it was Combi Christ was the last band that I saw open up for Rammstein. I don't really see them as a band that's going to be taken out of support act very often. But Yeah, I can um, see that. I don't think it's coming out until 2025, but I am looking forward to see what Trent Reznor and Nine Inch Nails as a whole does with the the uh, the score for the next Tron movie. As I was a massive fan of the the uh, the score for the last one that Daft Punk did, 
and I'm not even that much of a Daft Punk fan, but I absolutely love what they did. So, but I don't think that comes out until until next year. Is there anything that we haven't gone over that you'd like to throw in? I am going to be announcing the lineup for Vrone on Venus soon. I'm going to be announcing the members that I have that are going to be a part of it. And I have, like I said before, and I would say sometime early next month, I'm going to be releasing a song called How Pretty It Could Be. And that will probably be the last bit of music that I release for a while. And from here on out, I just want to focus on getting this band, um, you know, playing some shows. Now, my last question I have for you, I, again, after being in Devil Driver for 20 years, having to pull up legends like Death Angel, Napalm Death, Suffocation, playing the main stage at OzFest, what were just some of your favorite memories you can just take from that? You know, I always go back to when we played the main stage at Bakken. The second stage, one of the times we played the second stage at Download inside the 10 when we had that massive, massive circle pit going. That was a world record, right? Well, we tried to make it a world record. Oh, okay. <laughs> we, hit up, we hit up Guinness to see if they would come out to do it, but they wrote us a letter back that uh, maybe I took the vibe of the letter incorrectly, but it almost... It felt like they were almost offended that we would even ask them to do such a thing. But they did write us back, saying that there was no way to accurately measure the size of a circle pit. So, no, we don't hold the record for that. We tried to get them out, and uh, unfortunately, they denied us. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> well, I, re I remember seeing the video, actually. I just remember that random guy climbing up the pole in there. <laughs> Everybody remembers that. And then, of course, you know, the, for as far as smaller shows, um, playing Moscow the first time and opening up for Testament in Tokyo. There was one other one that we, we headlined a festival in the Ukraine. And there's just something in the water in the Ukraine and Russia that those people just go absolutely insane. Like some of the rowdiest crowds that I've ever experienced. It's, it was it was quite an experience. And I'm grateful that I had a chance to play Ukraine and, and Russia because with the way things are going right now, I highly doubt that I will ever get back there again. I hope so. And, you know, things cool down around that area of the world. But going to Russia and going to Ukraine, it's a trip. Really, really good shows. And that's about all the questions I have for you. It was great talking to you. Myself and the whole Mel Express radio crew wishes you the best moving forward with the new project. As a longtime Devil Driver fan, it's sad to see you go, but I'm happy for you. You know what I mean? Thanks, man. Appreciate it. If you like the content we bring you about the heavy metal world, please like, subscribe, and comment to help us grow the channel.